For our Like Folio segment, I'd like to now bring in the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, Mr. Landon Swan, to the show. He's going to talk about a stock that got a little beat up after the holidays, and that is FedEx. Landon, we love to talk about FedEx and UPS in the same segment. We're going to trade them both. You're going to talk about them both. FedEx dropped a bit after their la- their last earnings. Do you have any change in this story based on the LikeFolio data? Yeah, I tell you what, last quarter we were, uh, if you guys know our earnings score, negative 100 to positive 100, we were negative 40 going into FedEx. So we were pretty pleased with the report. Um, you know, big drop off in December there. And, and the stock's been, you know, mostly sideways since then. Um, it, you know, we've only got, uh, what, like a, a, basically a month worth of data since then. The score has moved to negative 25. So it's improved, if you will, but we're still pretty bearish on it. A lot of it has to do with just, you know, our, our data, frankly, I mean, the mentions are down about 23% on a year over year basis. Happiness has dropped nine per, nine points down to 54%. Uh, and it's, it's just, it's not looking great. I mean, you can see here the chart, uh, the blue is the, the 90 day moving average of mentions, people talking about Federal Express. And, you know, again, about uh, 46% of those mentions are negative. I mean, people are very frustrated with uh, late packages lost uh, lost or damaged packages. I mean, it's just they have a lot of problems. Um, and so when we look at even web data, for example, FedEx is down about six points while UPS is, is flat or actually up. Uh, I'm sorry, it's up point one uh, up one percent. Excuse me. So um, they've got it's it's a clear for us that UPS is the is the better company right now. They're they're better, not bigger. And I think that kind of encapsulates their strategy. Um, they've got, you know, there's a lot of headlines right now with uh, USPS and how that's going to affect the, the FedEx Express service. Obviously, that's going to be bad for them as well. Uh, the only positive is that, the, you know, the 2023 holiday sales were up uh, overall about 5% just for the U.S. economy. So more packages should be shipped than last year. I think a lot of that's already priced in, but people are buying more electronics, apparel, uh, to- toys and furniture. Those are the, the main categories that people are purchasing. Uh, but everything that we've got is is just not impressed with FedEx, all of our data, even with the sell-off. So, you know, that sell-off is going to make us less bearish because it's, you know, it's a lower price. But uh, the data that we have hasn't really moved that much. Uh, plus, you've got some negative headlines. So for us, uh, FedEx is still one to to stay away from or maybe even play to the downside. And it's, it's interesting because you know, I had a post office experience recently that I was just joking with Kev about. That, you know, it, it's just a, if you need something on time, it feels like FedEx still is the way to go. But it's, it's fascinating to see your data just kind of that slow trend lower. Do you have any comparison of kind of the non-traditional shippers? Like how does Amazon's shipping element play into that? Because there, there's so many other companies doing their own logistics now and moving away from those two traditional ones that play into sort of the that happiness score at all? Um, you know, it, we like to look at FedEx versus UPS, and they're actually both pretty close when it comes to happiness. Amazon, it's di- it's more difficult for us to break apart Amazon shipping. I mean, the data is there, but they've got so many other uh, business units, and it's such a small part uh, that it's really more about volume than happiness. And so uh, we haven't, you know, everyone's always afraid when Amazon comes into your business, how is that going to affect things? And of course, it did, and it will. Uh, but no, I, I don't have any tremendous insights given Amazon's data. Um, I, I will say that people are more and more frustrated with shipping just in general. The, yeah. the bar is sort of rising. Uh, it, you know, it used to be if you can get it to me uh, and within two weeks, I'll be happy. Then it's one week and now it's two days and it better be here by 3 p.m. Like it, it, expectations are continuing to rise and rise and rise. And that's a good thing for the consumer. Uh, but of course, those happiness scores are going down. So people and businesses are always shopping for a better way to, to get their goods to their customers. Landon, is there a part of this that FedEx can still be an effective stock to trade? You know, like I say all the time, at some point I want to be long every stock, at some point I want to be short it. If they cut costs, they're buying back a billion dollars of stock they announced at their last earnings, even though they did lower the full year re- uh, revenue forecast. Part of it because of that U- United Postal Service uh, dispute that you're talking about, that's also being renegotiated. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel here? At some point, will it get cheap enough to nibble at? 
Of course. Yeah, I love your theory. I mean, I, I completely subscribe to that theory. Um, and, you know, for me, it's it's testing the lows right now. I mean, you, I got to see low 200s, 210, 215, and then I, then I might consider it. Um, you know, our system is, does a pretty good job of balancing the, the price and expectations along with consumer sentiment data, web data, app usage, all of that uh, trend data. And what we've got right now is an overall picture of still just slightly overpriced despite the the drop from 280 down to 2 247 you guys can see on your screen night right now you know we were bearish going into that we still think there's a little bit more room if you get down into under 230 we're probably going to turn neutral and you get into low 200s we might flip bullish assuming you know the data kind of stays the same that's that's the caveat we're always watching where that data moves Landon Swan, co-founder of likefolio.com. We always appreciate you coming on and giving us the likefolio data. It's, it's a market mover. It always has been, always will. Thanks for coming on, Landon. Thanks, Landon. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Nick. Take care.